Hello again, welcome to Painter's Block. I'm your host, Anthony Ryden. Today we will be we will be going over our smoky hot blend with our Phoenix here, making a Moltres. Now we're gonna start off by priming our entire model white just to make sure we get our true values. And uh, if you have an airbrush, you could tip the uh, ends with black, but otherwise I would just use uh, that with the brush. That's my Titan with the red blend and the Ab my Abaddon that I just finished with the red blend as well, just to kind of showcase what it looks like after it's done. Really has this nice dark to red, like really bright glow, so it really contrasts well. And then we're going to start with our Abaddon black, and like I said, if you had an airbrush, you could probably just uh, get a really good um, black, matte black or a glossy kind of black and uh, or Abaddon black and just thin it. And then you can use that on the edges, but I'm going to use my makeup brush, and I'm just going to get a really thick one and uh, apply this everywhere on the ends. And this is going to act as our smoky trail off from our fiery phoenix, kind of giving it more of an ashy, billowy effect. And I'm going to just make sure to get enough of this to travel along the, uh, the along the tail because there is going to be a layer of dry brush and gray and some blue added in to just uh, blend in from the black to the red. So we're just going to carry this on over, and in order to blend it into the main body, we're going to want to cap, uh, get, capture this into the wings as well. And since there is a lot of billowy smoke, just want to bring that in to that area all along the uh, wing tips and all the way up to the feathers. I thought it would be like a little bit cooler to have seen these tipped black feathers, almost like camouflage that it developed, so that it's harder to shoot it down because it even blends in its outer edges with the smoky trail, making it effectively a smaller target. There you go, you just kind of go all the way around and make sure to get both ends. Make sure to keep your wet palette fresh and uh, keep your paint all freshened up too. Every now and then when I go back down I uh, run out of my Abaddon Black so I just gotta revamp it and put in a little bit of fresh uh, paint in there just to make it all not lay down rough because whenever you let paint dry and you start using it over paint you just laid you create a rougher texture and uh, it doesn't look very good <clears throat> and then our next step is deep blue i use stormcast storm or the contrast storm fiend uh, from citadel but you can use any um any contrast or any deep blue kind of watered down paint and then you're just going to apply this in between each of the uh, the white layer and the black layer that we've just created. And this is going to create our uh, our little layer of darker, deeper black into our darker, deeper reds. And that blue is how you get that. It's a little bit of a uh, step that you don't normally think about, but when you see flames and also just like a deeper layer of uh, black tends to be blue. So um, yeah, just a little secret there that uh, a lot of artists kind of hold out on people is when you make flames or smoky textures or smoky uh, colors and you need to use a little bit of blue with that black. The next step we're going to do is uh, grab our ball red. In this we're going to still using that same um, that same makeup brush we're just going to apply this all around uh, in between next to the blue and kind of covering most of the blue if not all of the blue. And this is going to be our transition from the black into the red, creating that really, really deep, uh, that deep red that we're gonna want. And then that kind of pale red that comes from the white side, that's okay. We're gonna fill that with orange and that's gonna became, become a, a truer red. I'll put a link in the description below into my red blending just to explain farther how uh, that works, just because when you use a white base with red and you uh, you need to fill it with an orange or a brighter tone. Those are the color pigments that are tend to be missing or not there aren't enough of because you're using a white base. So you need to you need that. So yep, just going around and making sure to tap all the areas. There you go. And that's what it should look like once you've done it. It looks like a nice dark red to a bright red. Now we're going to grab our our army uh, painter lava orange. This is a great orange, but you can use any bright orange. Then you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to tap in between the red and the white and get that orange to get that other layer of uh, darker orange into brighter orange using that white as your uh, your landmark. After I tap 
the color or the orange onto the spot, I go back and I, I swipe the color back and forth to try to create and lightly through this, lightly creating a little bit of a blend between the red and the white and softening that line in between our layers. And there you go, you're just gonna tap it in and then you're gonna brush it out. There you go. And just make sure to get both sides and you can see it's already starting to really heat up and look a lot more like a really hot surface. But now we're gonna grab our Bad Moon Yellow we're gonna use go into our brighter spectrum. And that would be going shifting into the yellow side of the color wheel. And you're just going to do the same thing and tap this, but using a smaller brush. I use my smaller makeup brush, but any smaller uh, dry brush is probably preferable. Smudging brush, anything you want. Something to place this yellow in between like we just did. There's going to be a smaller surface area. So you're just going to apply this carefully into this area, going into the orange and back into the white, creating our deeper orange, our deeper yellows and our brighter yellows. <clears throat> And I just kind of, I kind of bring it back a little bit farther. I wanted to create more of a, uh, a depth. And here you can see I'm trying to play with this little middle streak. I wanted to see if I wanted to warm it up. And I feel like it kind of takes away from it, but I don't know. I'm going to let it sit for a bit. But I'm going to grab our titanium white. And I'm just going to put about 50-50 uh, with this Bad Moon Yellow. Dry, dry it off on the towel, make sure it's not gooped up on that uh, brush. And then you're just gonna apply this to the most of this area we have left. And that's going to cover our lighter spectrum of yellow. Then you're putting this mostly over the light yellow that we already had. And it's gonna create this really pale yellow look going into our beak. It's gonna be a really white area. And here you can see, here you can see I tried to mess with this a bit, but uh, ended up just deciding I didn't want that. It took away from the front, so. I went back in with that ball red and filled it and then a little bit more orange just because I knew it was going to turn a little too pale and fill it out so it turned a little bit more like a deep red. And then I grabbed more like a 75% to a 25%, 75% white, 25% yellow. Then I just put some more of that in there and then I grab a little bit more yellow and I'm trying to just fill out the spots I feel like aren't vibrant enough. So here we can see I'm going in and I'm just filling out that yellow saying, okay, so there's a little too much pale yellow and enough deep yellow. So we're going to get that in there. Looking pretty good. All right, just flip it around. And um, if you like what you've seen today, please leave us a like and um, follow us here on YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell. Anyways, back to it. We're just gonna grab uh, some of our red. I noticed that I don't like this undercoat, uh, underlying area where the red was supposed to be. I wanted to bring that more into the orange. <coughs> and uh, yeah, we're just making this a little bit more vibrant. Making a little heat up, more like a real Moltres. Really fun. Yeah, all right. Just, this step's just really going through and just looking at each layer and seeing what you don't like, what you do like, and just adding each pigment that you want to each spot. And this is just touch up detailing. For the most part, you have it all done. Yep, there you go. Now grabbing that titanium white, we're really just having mostly white on there. And uh, maybe the tiniest bit of yellow, but whatever's pretty much just left on our tiny little uh, dry brush or makeup brush. And we're just going to tap this onto the ledges where the white is. And we're just going to try to increase that brightness because I want them to look really, really hot towards the front. Like he's really billowing smoke out the back end and he's just about to really kick some butt and burn some enemies and show dragons what real fire is like. And there you go. Next step, we're going to grab our, our gray. I use Celestra gray, but you can use any gray. Just something in like a really mid-tone. And you're just going to dry brush this really lightly. I put it all on my, my towel for the most part, and I uh, take off as much as I can onto the um, onto the towel and put a little bit onto the brush. And I dry brush this upwards onto the, uh, the smoke. This is going to create our smoky appearance over all of our black areas and really give off our billowing smoke effect. Now, don't forget to grab that under that underside, but yeah, just keep on dry brushing upwards and don't forget, don't go back and forth because you don't want to fill in the crevices. 
you want to leave that black you just want to hit all these raised surfaces especially on this model where it has a lot of texture and thank you for uh, coming in and here's our finished product our uh, burning moltres with billowing smoke effect using our blue to really bring in the black and the red and blend it all together and I hope you enjoyed yourself here and uh, if you did just remember to subscribe and follow us and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thank you for coming in and uh, hope we helped you break your painter's block.